The opportunity for the media companies as well as service providers is to start putting their non-real-time content transcoded on the cloud. It's, uh, it's much more flexible, it, it defers OpEx and CapEx, and it allows them to scale along with their data center and with the amount of content that they need. So it's, it's ideal in terms of being able to provide all that content to second and third screens and do it in a very cost-effective way and leverage their in-house data center. So I think the market opportunity is broad. So you've got the big media companies like NBC that's using our transcoding in the cloud for the Olympics and it gives them a lot of flexibility since the Olympics last only a month. Now they're able to pull all that transcoding and use it for other purposes via their cloud. Um, you've got smaller companies like TV Global, um, which is actually a pretty big content provider in Brazil, but doing a small application like uh, voting and viewership around second and third screen for the content for programming like The Voice. And you've got um, the service providers, they want to put the transcoding in the cloud as they move to things like cloud DVR, and they want to be able to provide that same content they're providing from the cloud to the main screen. They want to also be able to provide it to the second and third screen. So they too want to transcode in the cloud. And then finally, the mobile operators. They want to be able to transcode in the cloud, be flexible, and then take advantage of new uh, content or new compression technology, such as HEVC, which will cut their bandwidth in half as they have to transmit it out of the, over their cellular network. So all of it, every single market, whether it's media companies and content owners, service providers that are fixed line, and service providers that are mobile. Well, I think the first thing is, as I mentioned, HEVC, cutting the amount of bits in half with the new compression technology. The way con uh, service providers are going to be able to provide 4K. How pervasive is that and when will that roll out? You're going to start to see chips come out for HEVC and for 4K, really in volume towards, I'd say, the end of 2014. And you'll start to see devices utilizing it in 50. And then it'll take until 2016 to really get a full experience of 4K on the primary television set because you need something called P60 in terms of the lines of resolution to be able to get the full experience on that 60 or 70 inch television set. So we are taking the lead on HEVC, the new compression technology, and developing both appliances for encoding and transcoding as well as putting that ability in the cloud as well. The only way that a wireline operator let's say, is going to be able to provide HEVC, I mean 4K, is to be able to use HEVC to compress in much more efficiently. Otherwise, instead of using 5 megabits for MPEG-4, they would need to use 18 megabits for 4K. They can't afford that. They need to bring that back down to 9 or 8 megabits to be able to provide 4K content. 